Here we are at our example 2a from our 4.1 set of notes. Now, to kind of help us out in asking for the vertex, we're going to go ahead and dive into some of our definitions too. Um, to find out what is the y-intercept for a quadratic, again, here is the shape of our parabola. And a parabola is just pretty much the definition we use for the graph of our quadratic. Um, to find out the y-intercept, it is exactly like how we've done a lot of our functions in the past. Uh, when you're trying to figure out your y-intercept, as we can see, it's crossing there at 0, 0,3. Um, whether it's a line, uh, a parabola, or you know any other function out there, it doesn't really matter what, your x value is always going to be 0 there. And because we're graphing parabolas for right now in standard form, which is y equals ax squared, plus bx plus c. In standard form, since our x value is always zero, then that would make this term right here just be one big zero. This term right here be one big zero because you're, again, you're dumping that in for x. And, last, and thus, you just end up then with this c value. In standard form, when you try and graph and find your y-intercept, it's always gonna be zero comma, just whatever that c value is. So, for example, if it said that the, that C value was like a 3, then it would be 0, 3. Okay. Now, to find out the vertex, this is where a lot more of the math starts to occur. Uh, in order to find it, your X value, when it's in standard form, got to keep that in mind, you're still in standard form, your X value is going to be equal to the opposite of B over 2 times A. Okay. Then you have to substitute that in, to find out your y coordinate. All right. And then this is a point on the graph. So as you can tell, our vertex, that's where we're going to see our minimum or our maximum value occur, okay? So earlier the a value determined that you were going to have a minimum or maximum, whereas the vertex is saying, no, this is where it's located. Okay? So in order to find that, again, you just have to follow this formula. And then lastly, the axis of symmetry. We'll dive into that when we see an example. That's pretty much just your x value from your vertex. It's super easy to find. It literally takes a like half a second. So to find your vertex, for example, 2a, let's go ahead and see this in action, what it looks like. Uh, I always encourage my guys to do two things to start out when you're trying to find the vertex. First of all, what identify what is your a what is your b and what is your c so really there's a one in front that would be your a our b here looks like he's positive four and our c value here is positive one so there again we just identified our a b and c now we're going to go ahead and rewrite this quadratic i'm sorry this this vertex form in finding out the x value and the reason why I always encourage students to rewrite this, the x equals the opposite of b over 2 times a, is because you're going to get hit with so many different like formulas in this unit. And they're all very helpful. Um, and usually by the end of the unit, students can kind of keep track of what's what. But just reinforcing that from the beginning is going to help you. So again, x is equal to the opposite of b over 2 times a. So then x is equal to, all we're going to do now is just plug in our values. So as we can see, we have the opposite of b. In this case, we determined that it was 4. All over 2 times our a value. In this case, we see that a is 1. Now, simplifying things up a little bit, we end up then with x equals negative 4 over 2 times 1 is 2. And so when you divide, you get x equals negative 2. Now we're going to go ahead and take that x value and plug it in to figure out what is our y. And again, we're going to plug that anywhere that there is an x value inside of our quadratic. So we don't yet know what y is, but it's equal to 1 times our x that we just found, negative 2 squared, plus 4 times negative 2 plus 1. And then simplifying this up, we have y equals... 1 times negative 2 squared is 4. So 
So there all I did was my, my exponent. Now I'll go ahead and multiply these two terms together. So we have y equals 4 minus 8 plus 1. And then lastly, just combine everything together. So then it looks like it comes out to be negative 3. So our vertex here comes out to be negative 2 comma negative 3. Now, because our a value here is a positive one, you would expect to see a u facing upwards. And then this vertex that we just found is the location of that minimum value. All right. Now that axis of symmetry, again, this takes literally two seconds. Um, it's pretty much just your x value from your vertex. So it's x equals negative two, boom, done. All right. But we'll talk more about that in the future. So again, though, that is our example 2A from our 4.1 set of notes.